Hey guys, it's Brian Storm. Very different type of video coming at you today. I call it the lab. What we're going to be doing is taking two skaters, one that's short and skinny and another that's tall and fat and bumping up all of their skating attributes such as speed, acceleration, endurance, and agility. We're going to be conducting four experiments to find out whether or not physical attributes affect the skating of a player in NHL 18. Both skaters will go head-to-head -head without the puck while hustling, pressing in the left stick, without the puck without hustling, then with the puck with hustling, and with the puck and without hustling. I've conducted these experiments a few times. They all turned out the same, so let's get started with the first test. So what did we learn? Yeah, we have to go into instant replay for this one because the puck makes the camera all the way back in our zone. So this first one, both players are hustling without the puck. Blue has a tiny bit head start, but both players appear to be going at the same speed until red crashes into the goalie. The fat one was veering slightly off to the right, but that's okay. For high, I have another instant replay where that doesn't happen. They're still skating at the exact same pace. Nothing is changing. I can speed things up for you. I can make them go in reverse. I can even shake things up a little bit, but in the end, they go at the exact same pace. However, how ever, notice what I'm seeing here. It looks like the two of them are mirrored positionally, but that's not the case for the cursor. It seems to be a lot further back on the tall and fat player kind of like towards his butt. And it locks up a little bit further up for the short and skinny player. So that's why when we go back into instant replay, it kind of looks like the big one is a step behind the short one. So while their skating isn't affected, having a big player means you're a lot further away than you think you are. Kind of like the opposite of a car mirror. In conclusion, Without the puck, with hustling, both players move at the same rate going full speed. But you may be a step behind as a bigger player. From here, we're going to move on to without the puck, without hustling. And this one I found very interesting. Again, similar start, nothing to see there until we go into instant replay. And take note of where the small guy's marker is. Does it kind of feel like it's moving forward a little bit. So I did the same test, except I gave Blue a little head start. He was a little bit further ahead this time, and Red is gonna end up pulling ahead just by a tiny bit. Also, I might be doing some more of these experiments in the future. If you guys have any kind of suggestions on what I can test out, let me know in the comments below. I don't know if this distance is anything to go crazy about. Let me speed things up a little bit just so that you can see it for yourself. And then I'm gonna do it in reverse as well. At the same time, however, this is when both players are not pressing the left stick in. The size differences between the two skaters is at its most extreme, which means that the smaller differences in sizes will lead to even smaller differences in distance. Despite that, without the puck and without hustling, the small player moves faster at top speed when both players are not hustling. So I think the only place this will really make a difference is when both players are tired and they can't really hustle because they're out of energy. That is where the smaller player will be a stride or two further than the bigger player. From here, we move on to both players with the puck. The only way to do that is to record them separately. They are both hustling and going at full speed. And I don't know about you, but I just do it. I mean, uh, they look like they're going at the same speed. So again, speed things up, reverse, speed things up again, and those markers and the puck are the same distance away from each other. This means that both players move at the same top speed with the puck while hustling. The last experiment is with the puck without hustling. And here I thought, well, it's gonna produce the same result as without the puck without hustling. But that's not true because they're the same distance away from each other yet again. Though this one might be a little bit harder to judge, so this time I'm actually going to slow it down. And I think that the only difference in where the puck actually is is just due to the fact that the bigger guy has the bigger stick, the bigger reach, so he's pushing the puck a little further ahead. Which means it's going to be harder to take the puck away from him from behind with a poke check because he's pushing the puck further ahead. But to summarize, with the puck without hustling, both players move at the same speed. In conclusion, the small skaters only have a slight advantage when skating without the puck and without hustling. They may 
may also have a slight positioning advantage based on the first experiment, but that's not related to skating. Whereas the bigger player has a slight advantage with the puck because they push the puck further away from themselves, making it harder to strip the puck from them. That'll do it for this lab experiment in NHL 18. Stay tuned for some more experiments coming up in the future.